patient guide for cataract surgery lens implant options. We run the number one cataract surgery practice in Los Angeles with a private surgery center in Beverly Hills. Now this video is going to explain to you the basics of the lens implants that are involved in cataract surgery to help you make the best decision possible. Now looking here, this is an eye with a cataract. You see in that central pupil zone, it's very hazy or opaque or whitish. That's a cataract. So cataract means that the human lens has gone from clear to cloudy, and we call a cloudy human lens a cataract. A cataract is not a film that grows in the eye, and a cataract does not have to be ripe like a banana for surgery. In fact, the best indication for you to have cataract surgery is if your vision is not good enough for your normal daily activities. As the saying goes, if it's not broken, don't fix it. If you're doing okay and you see well enough and you're happy, leave it be. But if you have a cataract like this patient and their vision is very blurry, we can make your vision a whole lot better. This is a patient now right after cataract surgery. The eye looks totally normal. If you look at that central pupil, it's nice and clear as it should be. It's jet black. Now, there is a man-made lens implant in this eye. You don't see it. It's behind the blue, green, or brown iris. So there's an outline of what it looks like. But remember, this is permanent in the eye, behind the iris. It never comes out. You can't take it out. Even if you rub your eye, it doesn't come out. So this is a once-in-a-lifetime surgery. You do the cataract surgery once, it's good for the rest of your life. It does not have to be repeated in the vast majority of cases. Now, this lens implant is tiny. Look at the size compared to a penny. It's about 6 millimeters for the round optic. That's the diameter. That's about a quarter of an inch. And these are all made in the U.S. of the highest standards and the highest optical quality. I don't use any generic or cheap implants. For the best vision, you need the best implants. Here's the lens implant inside someone's eye. This is at the end of surgery. And the eye looks orange in the center because we're intentionally causing a camera red eye so we can see detail better. And the pupil's dilated here, but remember, this lens is going to be behind that blue iris. And it's there permanently. And look at this eye right after surgery. You can see there's no bleeding or swelling. In fact, this patient goes home with no pain and no eye patch even. The whole surgery is done without any needles, stitches, or even steel blades. On the left is a picture that shows the blurry vision you get from cataracts. Not only is it blurry, but it's darker, contrast is gone, it's just really a poor image. On the right is the after, clear vision after surgery. Of course the sharpness is better, but also the contrast, the richness of colors, the brightness. If you have difficulty driving at night, cataract patients after surgery, say nighttime driving is so much easier. So look at this chart. Let's explain it to you first, because this explains visual range without glasses. So you can see on the top, it goes from one foot, two foot, three foot, all the way out to a thousand feet away. And on the left side column, it goes from blurry vision, acceptable, clear vision, or perfect. So this uh, purple line that you see here is a cataract lens in a typical patient. If you're seeing me for cataract surgery, you have blurry vision at almost all ranges. That's why you want to have surgery. The green line up at the top, this bright green line, is something even I wish I had. That's the perfect human lens of a healthy 25-year-old human. Well, as the saying goes, youth is wasted on young people. And we'll never get back to age 25. I don't have the fountain of youth. I cannot give you that. This dark green line is what I have. This is the lens of a healthy 50-year-old human. And you can see the main difference is the near vision drops off. And you see that with your friends. You know that when you hit about age 50, near vision becomes more challenging. And you either hold your phone farther away from your face or you look around for those over-the-counter reading glasses to help see up close. Now, our first option for cataract surgery is this yellow line. That's the distance vision, single focus lens implant. And you can see it gives about the same vision as a healthy 50-year-old person. 
So if you're a cataract patient who's 70 or 80 years old, and I can give you the vision you had when you were 50, that's pretty amazing. So that's a good option for surgery. The next option here is this blue line. And this is a trifocal lens implant for surgery. We call this the panoptics lens. Now, trifocal means it helps you see far, intermediate, and near, all without glasses. And you can see this patient can see from about 16 inches from the face all the way to far vision without glasses. But there's a catch. You can see the quality of vision's a little bit less. And then also there's some nighttime glare and halo. And we'll talk more about that. And then the last option is there is an extended depth of field lens. This is the Vividi lens. This lens gives a little bit more range than the yellow lens and also a little bit better quality and a little bit less of that nighttime glare and halo compared to the trifocal panoptics lens. But looking at this picture, the important thing here is no matter what lens option you choose for cataract surgery, all of them are so much better than having your cataract. And also remember that bright green line, that's the fountain of youth and we don't have it. So you cannot go back to age 25 any more so than a plastic surgeon can make a 75-year-old patient look like a teenager. So here are the two implants side by side. On the left, in yellow, this is the monofocal lens implant. If you look at it, you can see the central part of the optic, the lens part, is very smooth. The right side is an Alcon Panoptics trifocal, and what you see there are concentric circles, like a bullseye target. And those rings will split the light into the various ranges of near, intermediate, and far vision. So if you compare the monofocal here in yellow on the left compared to the trifocal here on the right, in the bright sunlight, the image quality for both is pretty good. If you look very carefully, the monofocal on the left is a little bit more vibrant, a little bit sharper than compared to the trifocal lens on the right. Now, if you're in the shade, there's a little bit more image quality difference. So you can see on the right, the image is just a little bit less contrast, not quite as vivid. There's more image quality difference if it's overcast outside. And you can see, again, the comparison of a monofocal to a trifocal. And then it's most pronounced at night. That's where the image quality difference is the largest. On the left, the monofocal lens implant gives a bright image. It's very clear. On the right, the trifocal lens gives an image that is technically sharp vision, but you can see the contrast isn't quite the same. Neither is the clarity. So we talked about the glare and halos at night. What this means is on the top in yellow, the monofocal lens implants, they give the highest quality vision at night without any excess glare halos around lights. The monofocal lens is the best choice for a perfectionist, an airplane pilot, and those who drive a lot. On the bottom here in blue, the trifocal lens implants, that would be the appearance of oncoming car headlights at night. And you see they induce glare and halos around lights at night because they split the light to give that near, intermediate, and far without glasses. This effect is primarily visible at night, and it tends to be less bothersome after many months. The body and brain get used to it. Now, here's the advantage of having the trifocal lens implant. On the left, if you have the monofocal lens implant and we give you great 20-20 distance vision, that's about the appearance of your wristwatch without glasses. On the right, in blue there, the trifocal lens allows you to see your wristwatch without glasses. Now, we can, of course, remedy this by having you wear glasses for the monofocal lens implant. So now the image on the left is pretty good but you had to put on your reading glasses. Same thing for your cell phone. Again, on the left is the monofocal lens implant without glasses. It's a little blurred. You put your glasses on, it improves dramatically. But on the trifocal on the right, it can, you can see the image either way, and you don't need to have the reading glasses. And a computer image, monofocal lens implant, it's not going to be super clear, but the trifocal will be great. Putting glasses on helps the monofocal lens implant see better. Now, this shows the range of vision you get. So the single focus lens, the monofocal lens, 
It'll let you see from extended fingertips to far away without glasses. So if you think about three feet to a hundred or more feet away is the range that you see without glasses. And things that are about two feet or closer to your face, you put on over-the-counter reading glasses. Now this option is what most of my patients choose, about 84% of them. So they can see, again, from extended fingertips to far away, and then they just use plus two or 200 reading glasses for computer, book, cell phone, etc. And of course, these patients have the best night vision without any excess glare or halos, the best contrast. The trifocal lens here in blue now, that's the multifocal lens, it splits the light. So you get the widest range without glasses. So you can see the range goes from about 16 inches to 100 feet or more. And then the very close work of 10 inches or 12 inches from your face may require reading glasses, but that's not usually needed unless you're pulling out a splinter or threading a needle. For your day-to-day -day activities, you don't tend to hold things 10 inches from your face. Remember, these lens implants split the light between the near, intermediate, and far ranges to give you the most freedom from glasses. However, the visual quality is not quite as good, and there will be night glare and halos in decreased contrast. Again, not recommended for perfectionists or pilots. This lens costs an additional $950 per eye. That's the actual wholesale cost of the lens. There is another option available, and this has come out recently, and this is the Extended Depth of Field Lens, EDOF. And what they do is they give you a little bit more range compared to the monofocal without glasses. So now you see the range increases a little from three feet for the near point to now two feet. So two feet to more than 100 feet away you can see without glasses, and things that are 20 inches or closer require over-the-counter readers. So it gives a little more range for intermediate vision, that'd be computer vision, than the single focus monofocal lens implants. And there's little downside other than the cost of the EDOF lens, which is an additional $950 per eye, and that's the wholesale cost of lens that you'd pay to the surgery center. Then there's a moderate decrease in contrast. And there's good night vision without excess glare and halos, and it has good contrast and image quality. So comparing the two lenses here, on the left again is the monofocal distance uh, lens, and you can see it has the clean central optic. On the right is the EDOF lens, the extended depth of field lens, the Alcon Vividi, and you can see there is a central zone there. And that central optical zone is meant to increase the depth of field. So it's not quite the same as the rings of the trifocal panoptics, but it has an effect to elongate the depth of field. Now, how much more does it give you compared to the monofocal? This is from the actual FDA trial data for when the Alcon Vividi lens was FDA approved. And you can see on the left, for distance vision, the monofocal lens is 2020, and on the right, the Vividi is 2020. And this is all without glasses. Intermediate vision, the monofocal lens is 2040. The EDOF lens was 20 out of 32, so a little bit better. And so similarly for near vision, one is 20 out of 60-ish, and the other is 20 out of 50. So basically the Vividi gives you one extra line on the eye chart for intermediate and near vision, but really not enough to read comfortably for most patients without glasses. And then you can see the car headlights tonight. There is a little difference with the Alcon Vividi. If you look at the actual patient information that they include with the lens, it says that patients are likely to experience significant loss of contrast sensitivity with that Vividi. And therefore, we have to warn patients about using caution in things such as driving at night or poor visibility conditions. So there is something to be paid for when you try to cheat physics, and that is image quality and clear and halo. So how do you choose? That's so much information. Well, think of it this way. You choose the status that best describes you, and that's a pretty good start. So in yellow, for the distance single focus lens implant, this is someone who says, I want the highest quality vision, the best night vision, and I'll happily wear glasses for a computer, cell phone, and reading. That's about 85% of my patients. The extended depth of field lens, the Vividi, is patients who would say, I want good quality of vision, good night vision, and I'll happily wear glasses for cell phone and reading. 
So they just get the additional computer vision two feet away without glasses. And that's 7% of patients. The trifocal lens implant, the panoptics, patients say, I want to be able to read, see my cell phone and computer without glasses, and to achieve that, I'll happily tolerate less contrast at all ranges and glare halos at night. And that's about 8% of the patients. There is no right and wrong answer. And I'll help you decide during your consultation. So we take into account your desires and your needs for your vision, but also what we call the biometry, the measurements of your eye and your ocular anatomy, and we'll decide what's going to be the best option for you. So I look forward to seeing you at the time of your consultation, and I'll happily discuss all these options with you in a lot more detail to give you the best vision of your life.